Do you want to solve Sudoku more confidently? I have solved hundreds of classic Sudokus, and I'll share with you my top three tips so you can solve puzzles quicker and with more confidence. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. We're going to three go here in block six. You might notice that you have a three in row five. You have a three in row six. The only place the three can go is right there. Greetings, friend. This is round six, puzzle one of the 2024 Sudoku Grand Prix. I'll share with you my top three tips you can use to improve your Sudoku technique. The last tip really brings together everything I've learned about solving. Look at block nine. Where can a three go? Because of this three, you only put two spots there. This is going to lead up to my tip number one. This three is restricted in these two cells. In column nine here, in block nine, a three cannot be anywhere else along the column. You cannot put a three here because of this three, but you can't put a three here anymore. This is called a pointing pair. And since you can't put a three here, where could you put a three now in block three? Well, with this three and this three, the only place left is right there. So we're going to use that pointing pair. And this leads up to my tip number one. I call it economy of marking. I did not mark the threes there. I did not go up here and mark the threes. Instead, I looked to do the minimal amount of marking. Because the more you mark, the more you have to remove later. It's also the more clutter you have to filter through. So when you start looking through and the grid is really filtered, it's hard to see where your solves are and what candidates to remove. And it forces your concentration away from the current solve so that you go back to remove marks. Instead, I'm going to explain a better way to incorporate marking in my third tip. But for now, I want you to know to use the economy of marking. So mark just as much as you need to. And if we continue solving cells, you won't have to do much marking. For example, notice that you have these two threes now in column rows one and two. You can solve for a three in block one. And then with this three, we can do some more solving up here in block one. We just restricted the block to three cells remaining. And this is what the expert will do, it's called sweeping the blocks. They will just try to solve all this so they don't have to go back to block one. You might notice that four cuts across right here. So you can solve this cell for a four. And this nine cuts up column one. So you can solve this cell for a nine, leaving just a five. So we swept all that out, didn't have to do any additional marking, and we made all those solves. And what I suggest you do now, and what I've learned from solving hundreds of puzzles, is you're going to pick one of these solve digits and see what new solves it will unlock. So let's click. And check out the nine. There seems to be quite a few nines here in the puzzle. Well, awesome. Using these two nines and this nine, you can solve for a nine in block seven. And then with these two nines, the only place for a nine now is right here. And once you notice that we put a nine in one of those blue cells, we know that the three had to be in one of the blue cells. We can actually go back and solve this for a three. So if you use your working memory, you can solve a three in the corner just like that. And you didn't have to make any marks. And I'll explain a little bit more later on how to find and solve these much quicker. So we just did that with the nine, but we're not done with the nines yet. This nine and this nine and the nine block four. We can solve for nine and block six. And now instead of going here and going, oh, there's two nines, I need to mark that, actually go up here where there's more restriction in block two. These two nines and this nine, you can solve this nine first. And then notice with one, two, three, four nines all poking into column or block five, you can solve the one remaining nine. And we reduce the need to make any marks. And now we're leading up to my second tip, which is going to allow you to unlock some more solves and sweep out another block. So let's look at where we can do here in block nine, right? You only have two digits remaining. And so you want to focus and sweep this block out. You see there's an eight there. We don't have an eight. So this has to be an eight and this has to be a one. And now with these two eights and this eight, we're going to follow the eights and solve for an eight there. Okay, where can the eights go now in block five? Because of these two eights, we only those two cells. We'll look over here in block six. With these two eights, we only these two cells. This is leading up to my second tip. 
you might notice since the eighths are restricted to two cells in blocks five and six, you got to be here and here or here and here, the same two rows, five and six. What this does is this is called a mini X wing. And it allows you to make some more restrictions about what's going on here in block four. Since the eighths have got to be here and here, here and here, they can only be in one of these top three cells in block four, right? Because if you put an eight down here, you wouldn't be able to fill in the eights in blocks five and six. Simon Anthony calls this a mini X wing, and this is what happens when the cells are limited to two blocks. If you had these four cells in four different blocks, so like if you had eights here and here and here and here, that would be an actual X wing. But since it's still in just two blocks, it's a mini X wing. If the eights could be in all three of these spots, you'd have a claiming triple. And so you know the eights would be there and you can restrict and eliminate all the other eights here. If there's only two of these spots, that'd be a claiming pair, which I include in my free Sudoku solving guide that you can get by just clicking on the pinned comment below. But since you have an eight here and here, the only place an eight can go right there, that's going to be a claiming single or more commonly known as a hidden single. It's the only place you can put an eight in block four. And then before I move on and tell you a little bit more about mini X-Wings, I want to hear from you. Did you see this mini X-Wing and solve the eight? Let me and the other viewers know in the comments and help me build the best Sudoku community on YouTube. It starts with your feedback. After doing this, you want to look what's the most restricted house that we can find right now. So a house is a Sudoku row, column, or block. You have several that have three cells remaining, like right here in column one and in column two. You also have three cells remaining here in row seven. If you look up here in row three, you'll notice there's only two cells remaining. And so we want to focus on where the greatest restriction is. We have a two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're just missing a one and a four. I've got these two fours here, so you know this cell has to be your four, and this cell has to be your one. And this is going to unlock another mini X-Wing for us. Because what we can do, now that you put the one there, is notice that you have these two ones, and this one you can solve for a one here in block three. Nice. So the ones are limited to these two cells in block six. And then with these two ones, they're limited to these two cells in block four. Looks similar to what we did with the eights, right? And since the ones are limited to rows five and six and columns four and six, we found another mini X-wing. And you can use this, my second tip, find these mini X-wings, make another solve here in block five. The one has to be in row four in block five because there's no other place in the row to put a one. Can't be here because that already has a nine, and it can't be here because of this one. So you can solve another one right there. And then using these two ones and these two ones, you can solve for a one in block eight. Did you notice something peculiar about the mini X wings? For the ones, it's in these two cells and these two cells. But for the eights, you may have noticed that eights are also restricted to these two cells and then these two cells. So the ones and eights are limited to these two cells here in block six. I'm going to color that orange. What you found here is a hidden pair. A hidden pair means when two digits are restricted to the same two cells in a block. I'm going to use this because this leads up to my third tip, which I'm going to show you here very shortly. What you want to know is that this creates additional restriction. A one and eight are the only two digits that can be in these cells. And so that forces one remaining cell that you can solve right now in block three. This can one eight right there. You also have a two, three, four, six, and nine in the column. So this cell now has to be a seven. And you may notice with this one eight here, you only have a two, four, and seven that can be in these three cells. And so let's look if we can do some more solving. You notice the two covers two of the cells, and we haven't even talked about twos yet in this puzzle. Well, let's see what we can do with the twos. So we can put a two right there. And then with these twos, you can solve for two in block eight. Nice. And this two and this two, you can solve for two up here in block two. And then with this two and these twos, you can solve for two here in block five. And then with these twos, you can solve for two 
finish off the tooth in block four. Nice. And now what you just did by using the mini X-Wing, using this nice hidden pair, is we've created so much restriction, you're going to be able to solve the rest of the top three blocks of this puzzle. Because we put that seven there, you know a seven's got to be in this block somewhere. So this has to be a seven forcing the six right there. And I don't see a six in block three, so you can solve for the six there, leaving a five right there. Nice. Uh, what you have left is a four and a seven. We can't solve that yet because you look over, there's no four and sevens to put there. This is going to lead into my third tip. And so what you want to do, again, look for the greatest restriction. Where can we find more restriction? We can't solve these cells yet. If you look down here in block seven, you might notice in row nine, we only have two cells remaining. We have a one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. We just need a four and a six. Well, I'm going to pull that six down from block one. That's a six and that's a four. This is going to lead to a nice bonus tip I have for you. It's called my neat naked triple trick. We're going to stay here and try to sweep out block seven. You have a one, two, four, six, eight, nine. We need a three, five, and seven. You may notice that a three covers two of the cells, and then the five covers an additional cell that three covers. Whenever you have this situation, you can solve all three cells. We know that the seven has to be right here because it can't be a three or a five. The only place the three can go is right there, and this digit has to be your five. And so we just swept out block seven. Now you need to look where would you want to go next in this solve? What block could you sweep out? Hopefully you're looking and going, it must be here in block eight. Because you have a lot of restriction. It's like these little stalactites coming down in the top and a bunch of restriction in the rows down here knows that we can solve these four cells. Take it in smaller bites. Don't try to solve all four. Just try to solve two at a time. Look here in row eight. You'll notice you just need a four and a six. I'm going to go up to and pull a four from that stalactite. So that's a four and that's a six. And then you just need a five and a seven right here. I'm going to go up and pull that seven down. So here's your seven and there's your five. And now we're getting to the spot where I'm going to reveal my third most powerful tip. It's going to also help us in the reason why I colored these two cells for that hidden pair. Notice that we've been trying to figure out which one of those two orange cells is a one and which one's an eight. We can finally do that because you do not have an eight yet in column four. There's only one cell remaining. This is a full house. And so we can solve that cell for an eight. So you can put an eight right there. And this is also a full house. We can solve this for a six. And so here's my tip. Now you got this eight. What we're looking for is a one step restriction. So in this one eight, these two cells here, all we need to do is be able to solve one more cell or remove one more candidate and you'd be able to make a solve. And so my Tip number three, most powerful tip for you is to remember and clean up your one step restrictions. Since we saw this for an eight, you want to solve that cell for an eight and solve that for a one. When you do this, you are always solving and going to have a purpose of where to solve next. So I'm doing all these solves to remember how can I get back and get this for an eight and that for a one. I know that will unleash and unlock more solving for me. So my next thing I want to focus on, you want to focus on, is trying to get this 4-7. Using tip number three, we need to be able to unlock a couple more cells to get to this 4 and 7. Well, with these two ones and these two ones, you can solve for a 1 right there. And since this is a nice full house, you can solve this cell for a 7. Now we found one of those digits. It's going to be able to help us unlock this. So this has got to be your seven. That's going to be your four. If you start solving like this, you're going to solve with more confidence. Use a little bit of working memory. You're going to clean up the puzzle so easily. Okay, you notice we have three cells remaining here. We can use my neat naked triple trick. All we have left is a four, five, and seven. I got a four, seven here. Seven repeated. You can solve all three. You know, this has got to be your five. The only place the seven goes right there, and this is going to be your Four. And since we just solved for the four, I'm going to look in my adjoining block and can I solve for the four here? Sure can. The four's got to go right there. And I also know that you need a five and a six. Well, I see the five right here. So this cell's got to be your five, and our last digit is a six. Challenge yourself to apply the three techniques you just learned to this next video. 
Thank you so much for watching.